Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I am a chemist who loves makeup. And in today's video, I am going to be responding to and I guess fact checking a video called The Ugly Truth About Makeup because it makes a lot of claims about what's in our makeup, how it can harm us, and I'm gonna give you my input from a chemist's point of view. I'm gonna try to hit as many points as I can speak to, but I'm also gonna try to keep this concise as well. I will link the original video down below so you can watch it in its entirety. I will also link all the studies and websites I talk about to back up my perspective in the description box down below. Before I jump into this video, if you wanna see more of me using science to talk about makeup, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll always be notified when I upload a new one. And with that, let us jump into the video. It turns out that the average American woman uses 12 products every day, exposing herself to about 126 unique chemicals. Many women use even more than that. And a lot of those chemicals are considered toxic. They've been linked to cancer, infertility, birth defects. They can even mess with your hormones. So from the get-go, they listed five things that can cause us harm in our makeup, which are asbestos, coal tar, carbon black, lead and formaldehyde. Asbestos, lead, and formaldehyde are all impurities, so you will not see these listed on an ingredients list. Asbestos is an impurity in talc, which is a commonly used powder ingredient, but talc is tested for the absence of asbestos using a couple of different methods, and this will be listed on the talc certificate of analysis, stating this testing was performed and is provided to the cosmetics company upon their purchase of the ingredient. If a company was found to be using non-asbestos free talc, that would be a huge no-no and would be detrimental to their reputation. At one point, someone had purchased a makeup palette from Claire's, got it tested by a third party lab and found it contained asbestos. When Claire's took a sample and tested it, they did not find asbestos in it. I don't know what the final verdict was on whether or not it contained asbestos, but I think a lot of people are now gonna avoid purchasing makeup from Claire's, especially because it's targeted towards younger kids. So cutting corners and not using these safe ingredients is not worth the loss of business that can occur from this. Lead is a naturally occurring heavy metal. Keep that term in mind for later. And in excess, it can cause health problems. The suggested limit for lead by the FDA is 10 parts per million, which is equal to 0.001%. So only a small amount is allowed to be present in consumer products. This limit was set because this was determined to be a level that does not cause harm to the user. And cosmetic companies have shown that if they properly source their ingredients, they will be able to keep well underneath this limit. Formaldehyde is something that is also naturally released into the environment. It is naturally produced by your own body. If you eat pears, pears also release formaldehyde. The hazard is gonna be determined based on the level of exposure. In cosmetics, there are some preservatives that release formaldehyde in minimal amounts in the presence of water. I don't know a lot about the concentration of formaldehyde in hair products, but as for cosmetics applied to the skin, the levels that occur in these products are not known to cause harm. Unless you have an allergy to formaldehyde in which even a small level of formaldehyde can cause an allergic reaction. But this does not pertain to the majority of the population. As you've seen already, this video is correct in that these things can cause harm. But the levels used in cosmetics aren't enough to cause that, but they don't mention that in their video. Coal tar is an ingredient used in products to treat skin conditions and some anti-dandruff products. It has been shown to cause cancer, but this is mainly a concern if you work in coal mining where you're exposed to it on a daily basis in high levels. And there are safety precautions in place for people who work in this industry. In patients using coal tar in products as indicated, there was not shown to be an increase in risk of cancer. And because it is used for the treatment of a condition, it's actually regulated more like a drug. Meaning there are a lot of requirements, including limits on how much can be in a product and how frequently one should be using these products. Carbon black is a colorant which was actually banned by the FDA in 1976 because it could not be proved that there is an absence of polyaromatic nuclear carbons or PAHs which are known to cause cancer, even though it was still allowed to be used in other countries, including the EU and Japan. In 2004, after a group proved its safety, it was given the name DNC Black Number no. Two, which means the FDA certifies each batch of the colorant produced. And one of the criteria is the absence of PAH. And it is only to be used in eye product because the risk of exposure to this is by inhalation. The only place where this colorant is banned is Israel. But the industry is largely unregulated by the FDA, which cannot require cosmetics companies to prove a product is safe before it goes to market. 
It also can't recall a product once it's found to be dangerous for consumers. It's up to the company to do that. When they say the cosmetic industry is largely unregulated by the FDA, this is semi-true. As we talked about with Carbon Black, the FDA does regulate colorants, including where it can be used and appropriate levels in products. Otherwise, the cosmetic industry pretty much self-regulates, which can sound kind of scary, but the FDA can and does audit manufacturing facilities of cosmetics and can obtain samples and perform testing on them. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that companies do to ensure safety, especially larger companies, because like I said earlier, it is detrimental to their reputation if a product comes out as unsafe. And there are so many cosmetic companies out there that people can just go seek products elsewhere. As for recalls in most industries, including pharmaceuticals, you will recall a product voluntarily if there's an issue. If the FDA has to request that you do a recall, which they can do for cosmetics, that's not gonna look good for that company. There are over 10,000 chemicals used to formulate cosmetics and personal care products. And these are industrial chemicals that we're talking about. I mean, the same chemicals that are used to grease gears or sterilize surgical equipment or stabilize plastics are used in your everyday makeup and personal care products. Janet told me that while the European Union has banned more than 1,300 dangerous chemicals from their cosmetics and personal care products, the US has only banned 11. As for how this woman describes industrial chemicals, as she calls it, I'm not sure what she's referring to. If she means the functions she listed, just because something is used for one particular function doesn't mean it can't be used for another. And I think this is a really dangerous mentality to have. If she means quality wise, that's also not necessarily true because there are different quality levels depending on what you're using it for. Something can be food grade or USP grade, which means it can be used in pharmaceuticals. Something for a car is probably not as impurity free because you are not consuming it or applying it to the skin. Therefore, the extra testing and purifying process isn't as necessary as it is in consumer products. As for the differences in banning products, the EU takes a very cautionary approach where if there's any sign of something being harmful, they ban it, whereas the US wants somebody to prove it's unsafe. Look for labels um, that, that have fewer ingredients. Stay away from the word fragrance in a product. That simple word fragrance can hide dozens and dozens of unsafe toxic chemicals. As for the comment of looking for fewer ingredients, I don't agree with this. There's usually a reasoning behind all of the ingredients put into cosmetics. Just because the product has less ingredients doesn't necessarily mean these ingredients are more safe. As for fragrances, that is why you see the word fragrance listed on ingredients list because these scents are considered to be a trade secret and therefore in terms of fair packaging and labeling, they cannot legally require that they disclose what is in these fragrances. Foundation can contain heavy metals like arsenic and titanium dioxide, which can cause cancer when it's inhaled. Eyeshadow can contain formaldehyde and mineral oils that are derived from crude oil. Eyeliner can contain heavy metals like lead and arsenic that are linked to cancer and reproductive harm. Blush can contain parabens that mess with your hormones and talc, which can have asbestos. Mascara can contain formaldehyde and dyes like carbon black that also cause cancer. And up to three-fourths of lipstick tested by the FDA contain lead. Many also contain preservatives like BHA, which is linked to cancer and reproductive harm. So there's a lot of info in that last little bit, and some of it we already covered. So I'm just gonna hit the claims that I haven't mentioned earlier. When they refer to heavy metals, this also includes lead, like I spoke about earlier. And again, there are limits in products and ingredients for heavy metals. A side note is that because heavy metals naturally occur, this also means that makeup labeled as natural is not necessarily free of these and are just as likely to have heavy metals in them if not more as synthetic ingredients. She mentioned here that the risk of titanium dioxide occurs when inhaled. So in liquids, I wouldn't even worry about this at all. Really again, only concern of those people who are working with it exposed at high levels on a regular basis. And then consumers are not likely to be exposed to it at a level that's gonna cause harm. Mineral oil is an ingredient that gets a bad rap because it's derived from oil. Now, I don't think that the source should be a reason not to use it because it's processed further to make the ingredient what it is. And I couldn't find much information from a study or an official organization determining its safety either way. So if you find information on this, please feel free to link it down below. Parabens is also mentioned as messing with hormones. 
They have been used for a very long time as an effective preservative. The whole scare came from one study that found that parabens were present in breast cancer tissue. Mind you, parabens also naturally occur in blueberries. And this study was found to be extremely flawed and discredited by many scientists. But this is a study that triggered many people to become anti-parabens. The one good thing that came out of this fear is that there's more research being done on the safety of parabens. It was found that the estrogenic activity in parabens is so small and they are metabolized by the body so quickly that it's unlikely to cause cancer or affect hormones at the levels that parabens are used in cosmetics. The most used parabens in cosmetics are methyl and propyl parabens and these had some of the least estrogenic activity. And this is why I don't hold much worry when it comes to parabens, but if you are concerned about parabens, a lot of companies have now replaced it, so there are a lot of options out there for you if you choose not to use parabens. As I said earlier, talc used in consumer products does not contain asbestos, which is the main reason why people claim talc is harmful. And one of the only routes of exposure that has been shown to cause harm is through inhalation. And again, this mainly applies to people working with it, daily basis, high levels. One study did possibly link it to ovarian cancer, but this was from using it in the genital region. And this relied on participants to recall long-term usage of talc in that region. And again, in makeup, neither of these things are really an issue. We talked about lead earlier, and because it is naturally occurring, it was found in three fourths of lipsticks. I actually think this statistic might be higher based off the research I did, but the FDA found a maximum level of three ppm in one lipstick, and this is significantly below the 10 ppm level that they have suggested. BHA is butylated hydroxy anisole. Honestly, can't recall ever seeing this on an ingredients list in a makeup product, but from my research, it has been shown to be safe, and I have linked a safety study down below. The only thing I saw about it being harmful is that they found during animal testing that it caused cancer solely in the fore stomach, which as humans, we do not possess. My hope is that this showed you there's more to the claims that these sensational videos make. And a lot of these use the tactic of fear mongering without evidence to back it up. That being said, you should continue to research beyond what I have provided you in this video and determine what products you will use based on what you feel is best. Luckily, there's a lot of options out there for whatever your preferences are. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button so I know to keep making these type of videos. And with that, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!